hello youtubers so um we are doing a series on uh, ASP.NET when I say we I said me and you guys um, so um, so far we're in the very beginning of it and uh, um, we we I used a, a drop down and I, I bound data to a drop down but now I want to show the difference between um, reading reading the data that is bound to that to that uh, control so uh, our project's website six. I should should have probably named something else, but um, in here so far. Um, if you want to know how we got here, just watch the previous video, and then you know how we got here. So, so when you bound, when you bind data to a drop-down control, there there are different there are different elements that can be that you can access. You can access uh, the index of the selected element. You can. Um, uh, access the the value selected. You can access the text selected. So I want to go ahead and show and show how that works. I am I'm going to I'm going to delete this one because we're not going to need it. And also in here, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this code because we don't need it. I should have probably I should probably just comment it out and leave it there, but that's fine. Um, so to show uh, to demonstrate what I'm what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna drop in um, a label in here if I can find it there label and uh, this is label drop down selected All right, that's a long name but anyways and in the drop down selected I'm gonna go to uh, events so I'm gonna click I'm gonna select the drop down list I'm gonna click on events and then in the uh, selected index change, I am going to double click. Okay, that's going to create an event handler in the uh, CS file inside the code file. And in here, I'm going to write the code that is going to um, uh, get executed when the uh, drop down on the selected index gets changed. So uh, our label control drop down selected text that text. And uh, initially, let's go ahead and then. Uh, display the value selected so drop down list equals selected value okay is this a string yes it is and another thing you want to make sure is that enable auto postback is selected okay because if you don't let me go ahead and unclick this I'm gonna run the project ask me to save you can see that if I change something Nothing actually is happening. It's not triggering anything. So what needs to happen is that you have to have enable postback. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and then uh, rerun the project. And then as you'll see, as I change this, you see that this this has nothing to do with the uh, with the selected name. So Carson shows this ID, and that's because when we when we bound this drop down list uh, choose data source when we bound it we chose the value to be a different field okay so I didn't want the author name I wanted the author ID and we could choose anything that is available from this data source but at this point I only have this two fields so um, you know you can be the same it can be different it doesn't matter so at this point I'm just gonna choose author ID and that's what's showing over there another thing that can be done as well Actually, I should create just uh, another label in here. Actually, let me go ahead and do that. Drop in a new label. This guy is what? Label one. I'll just leave it as label one for now. So, label one. Label one.txt is going to equal to drop down dot selected index. Is this an int? Yes to string and I'm gonna go ahead and run it when I change it then it displays the ID on the top and it, it displays the selected index remember this is base 0 so this index is 0 this is 1 and so forth all the way to the last one so index number 22 so I'm gonna go ahead and choose the first one which gives me back index 0 if you actually want the value being displayed inside the drop-down list um, the way to do that 
is to actually let me go ahead and stop debugging I'm gonna drop in another label in here and I'm just gonna give space um, this is label two, right? Yeah, label two. And so I'm going to say that label two dot tax equals to drop down list dot selected item dot text. And that's it. It's already a string. It already returns a string type, so you don't have to cast it to string. Okay. Uh, give us some room here as well and when I change it gives me the ID gives me the index number and then the actual value being selected okay so those are the differences between value index and so se and selected item text um, that's how you extract value out of your drop-down so um, this is a short video. On the next video, we're actually going to um, filter a grid based on the selection of the drop down. So uh, stay tuned, subscribe, um, make your comments, and uh, also if you have questions, uh, join join the uh, Facebook group. Uh, we have a lot of people, almost 600 uh, members over there, and we all help each other. And uh, there's always a lot of good questions being asked. So uh, thank you for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you next video.